Hello, it's been a while. Just a bit. Just a bit. Um, so I'm gonna really quickly, very quickly recap everything that you've missed. Um, well, probably not missed, but we've missed. Um, sure. In our little. At least miss talking about. Yeah, miss talking about um, for the past three weeks. So here we go. Nebraska Volleyball extended their win streak to 25-0 and pulled off a miraculous re uh, reverse sweep over Penn State and remains number one in the ABCA poll for four straight weeks now. Creighton vol Volleyball is at number 15 uh, for the second straight week and set a program record for the most consecutive straight wins, or straight sets one, excuse me, and extended their win streak to 11 matches. Britt Prince signed with Nebraska Women's Basketball, um, and basketball season started. Nebraska is 3-0, Creighton is 2-1, and, and that is because of a heartbreaking loss last night to Green Bay. Um, Omaha Women's Soccer reached the Summit League Championship, but fell to South Dakota State. But... But the hero in all of this was Nebraska, who made the NCAA tournament after falling in the Big Ten semifinals to Wisconsin. They had South Dakota State in the first round and beat them. They're going to take on Tennessee tonight. And welcome to Even Feel, the sports podcast that puts women first. I'm Josie, and I'm here with Amber. Hello. I'm impressed, Josie. That was very fast. That was very fast. That was very good. But we're speaking at the Husker soccer players. So that, as you just mentioned, they are hosting second round game tonight. Friday, November 17th, against Tennessee. Uh, before this, uh, Gonzaga and UC Irvine will be playing. Mm -hmm. um, that'll be on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, the Huskers won against South Dakota in the first round in front of the second largest crowd to ever see a hawker ma hawker, soccer match at Hibner Stadium. So, you know, people care about women's sports. Um, that's going to be a theme today, by the way. Uh, Tennessee <laughs> <laughs> is obviously their second round opponent. They're in the second round for the 10th time in their program history. So they also, like Nebraska, made the tournament as an at-large bid, but they are unseeded while Nebraska is the five seed. Um, they were, I will say the Vols were one of two unseeded teams to defeat a seeded team in the first round. So got some momentum, got some momentum, but the Huskers are ranked 15th. And as I mentioned, are the five seed. They've got first team, all big 10 honored players, uh, Eleanor Dale, Sarah Weber, and then a second team, all conference player players in Jordan Zaid and Haley Peterson. So, you know, stacked. St <laughs> I love that. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so they should be able to get past the, the balls who do have three all SEC players, one on the first team, one on the second team, and one on the all freshman team. The winner is going to take on, as I mentioned, either Gonzaga, who the Huskers have already beaten, or mm -hmm. UC Irvine. So, you know, exciting stuff. And that will be a Sunday game. The second one? Yeah. I believe Sunday so. Monday. I believe. Sorry. They do them over the weekends. Normally. They do, yes. Um, so that'll be pretty exciting. Uh, in. The win over South Dakota, Sadie White and Sarah Weber both scored two goals in that 5-2 to two win. So, you know. They're pretty balanced. Team. Ballers. Yes. Yes. Um, Eleanor Dale also won four Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week honors this year, which is the second most in Big Ten history. So, record books. She's so good. And she was the first Nebraska women's soccer player to be named to – uh, Big Ten forward of the year. Let's go through what she's leading the country in. Total goals, game-winning goals, goals per game, shots per game, and she leads the conference in shots, shots on goal, points, and is tied for third for total goals in Big Ten history. So yet another entry in the history books. Um, and then both Dale and Weber are from Gretna, in case you've missed the other times we've talked about them. So yeah. local girls to watch. And they're amazing. Yes. And you should watch them. And they're breaking records. Like yes. Attendance records. Exactly. Just so. like <laughs> all the other women's sports are. Oh, because, you know, people care about women's sports. They care about women's sports. <laughs> like the 100,000 people that would have been at the volleyball <laughs> match had they had places to put them. Exactly. <sighs> yeah. And the Iowa basketball. And the Iowa, you know. Which only sold so many tickets. Right. They limited their number a bit. Which is okay. We understand. Sure. We've been to Iowa and the weather is just like Nebraska. Well, not exactly. just like. But close enough but close where enough. it's, you can't really count on it, especially in fall. No, not at all. So. I'm surprised it didn't snow. But speaking of basketball. Yes, basketball. So 
Obviously, we have the big match on Sunday with Nebraska versus Creighton. Mm -hmm. But I do want to give a quick, the world's quickest, recap on what has happened um, for both of those teams heading into this. So Nebraska has off to a 3-0 start. They are doing fabulous. Jazz Shelley might be injured. Not really sure what's going on there. They haven't really released any information. Mm -hmm. But they do have Natalie Potts, who was a great addition. She won Big Ten uh, Freshman of the Week mm -hmm. on the same week, which is the only week that's happened yet, obviously, because it's the first week of the season. Um, but Caitlin Clark won Player of the Week. So, like, good company. Definitely. Um, but, so, yeah, um, Nebraska, off to a good start. But I am concerned about where Jazz Shelley's at because she is so good. Yeah. And, like you said, they really aren't saying anything. Um, she was just named to the, I mean, we're all shocked, uh, 50 players who are on the Wooden Award preseason watch list. I'm sure that I'm, was completely unexpected. I am so shocked. <laughs> but yeah, so she had a bit of a leg injury. Um, we haven't really heard much. Um, I think she got hurt like th less than three minutes into the game. Yeah, it was quick. And um, they were already shorthanded at the time. Yes. So they did not need that. No. Still won. Still won. <laughs> With suffocating defense. It's funny because I heard it described that way by 17 people. I'm glad you counted. Yeah, I did, because I was like, wait, did I already read this article? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Creighton, on the other hand, is not undefeated. No. But they are ranked. Uh, 22nd. This week. Um, not really sure what's going to happen next week, because they did lose to Green Bay. Um, Green Bay held Morgan Malley to uh, five points. So... I think we see the game plan for everyone going forward. Yeah, I'm sure Nebraska was like, I oh, take notes. <laughs> um, put... Markowski mm -hmm. and Natalie Potts and just double team mm -hmm. Morgan Malley and Crane's offense will uh, kind of stutter. They didn't really stutter. They just were missing a key component, I guess. Yeah. And Green Bay, I mean, they got out really hot. They did. They went to a 7 0 run or 17 0, excuse me, 17. 17 0 uh, run. And yeah, even though I believe the Blue Jays came back in the fourth, they were like down by four. Yeah, it was 55 51 at one point, mm -hmm. um, and they just couldn't get over that yeah. hill. So not a great offensive night for them, mm -mm. Um, but it's still going to be, that's not to say it's not going to be a fun game. No, let me tell you about that. They're going to play their best basketball because they always play their best basketball against each other. Like last year when they were both the, uh, both ranked and they were the only ranked matchup. Mm -hmm. And it yeah, was, was still played Were on, you able to watch it? No, it was on flow sports. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you like, how do you feel about flow sports? I really don't like flow sports. Um, it's very expensive. Um, I think last year, uh, Eileen and I were doing the math of how much uh, Flow Sports is in comparison to other streaming services, and you can buy like five or six other streaming services mm -hmm. for the same price of Flow Sports. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you and about you get Flow Sports. a lot Sport. more programming. You get a lot more programming, and also, like, you're not, like, they just put women's sports on there for the most part. I mean, they put, they put other, some, they put yeah. men's soccer. But they wouldn't put the 22nd ranked. They wouldn't put the, tw like, if Creighton men's basketball was n ranked number 22, right. they would not be. Right. And playing against a team that also went to the postseason last year. No. But anyway, this Sunday, <laughs> <laughs> I can get into flow sports for a long, long, long time. We need a Festivus episode. And, and we might just, I might just get into <laughs> it. Um, it's expensive. I think it's kind of ridiculous that it's almost exclusively women's sports behind it, at and least at Creighton. Um, I mean, yes, there are baseball games, there are men's soccer games on there, but there is not their moneymaker is men's basketball. Mm -hmm. And if you really wanted to push the flow sports and make money on flow sports, you would put a yes. men's basketball game on there. Truth. I'm not saying put the Marquette game on there. I'm not saying put the Villanova game on there, but you could put the ball. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> or some exhibitions, but yes. <laughs> I said what I said. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. And you are not wrong. Um, anyway, moving on. Yes. Uh, so Creighton and Nebraska will play in Lincoln um, Sunday at 1. It's on BTN, which is significantly more available to watch um, than Flow Sports. You don't even have to be home. You don't if you don't have it, go to a sports bar. They will all have it. Every single one of them. You know why? Because the Husker football team plays on there and they have to have it. Exactly. So you can watch it and you should. Because it will probably be a really great game. Because mm -hmm. I'm not joking when both of those teams play their best basketball oh. against each other. Until they get to the tournament. And then, like, sure. I mean, I'm not going to say Creighton didn't play their best basketball uh, when they beat Iowa in the Sweet 16. Um, because they did. Right. Um, that was amazing. Amazing. I cried. Um, <laughs> we love our sports here. We love our sports here. Anyway, that's happening. Yeah. But also happening with the Huskers, they had two big gets in their signing class they that did. just got announced. So Elkhorn North's Britt Prince signed. 
her stats are insane. We don't even have to go into them because we will never finish because she's just fantastic. She has led the Wolves to three straight Class B state championships. And she's also really, 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 really fast. She's so good. She's so fast. Yeah. I mean, not just on the court. Like, she was fifth at state and cross country her freshman year. She won state titles in track and the 4 by 4 in both freshman and sophomore years. Silver in the 800 as a freshman. Gold as a sophomore. She's also been named a Naismith Trophy High School Top 50. She's good. And then in addition to that, Kennedy Williams, who is... The coach's daughter. Yes. And is so talented. And is so talented. She was also the 2022 Lincoln Journal Star High School Female Athlete of the Year. She was Girls Basketball Player of the Year as a sophomore. She helped Lincoln Southwest to a Class A runner-up finish as a sophomore. And then missed most of her junior season with an injury that happened over the summer, Mm -hmm. but was back in mid-February and helped lead her team to a state tournament. And she's going to be playing softball for the Huskers. Yeah, no, she's she's crazy good, too. Yes, and the two of them together, mm-hmm. which aren't they friends? They are friends. They are good friends. And part of the reason uh, Britt Prince picked Nebraska over Indiana, who is their other finalist, uh, was because of Kennedy Williams. Which is just fantastic. So we've got the Husker women's season to look forward to. Yeah. Well, the remainder, because we're only a week in. And then we've got them coming. I know. So... It's it's so exciting. Mm-hmm. I, I, and they've had other, they had another signing, but we're talking about our local girls here. <laughs> yeah, because we're homers. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, yeah, big, huge, I, man, when Britt Prince picked Nebraska, I just was like, this is going to take them to the next level. It's their mm-hmm. first, like, five-star commit since, I believe, Taylor Kissinger. Yes. A lot of people were saying Jessica Shepard. It's actually Taylor Kissinger who came a year later. Um, yeah, it's gonna do wonders for them. Definitely. It's kind of the same. Like people, what people don't understand is like it's kind of the same. I mean, people around here understand. Um, if you're listening and you don't live in Nebraska, this thank is, you. This is yes, thank you. First of all, <laughs> it's lovely to have you. Um, this is the same level of Jordy Ball returning to Nebraska yes. softball. Her picking Nebraska over like national powerhouses mm-hmm. and. Like, I can't imagine making those phone calls to be like, I am not picking you. Right. Right. Oh, my goodness. Like, that is bravery. Yes. And then saying Nebraska, which legitimate program has done well, especially recently. And she's going to do well in their system. Yes. It's so exciting to see all of the names that are going to be on the roster in the future. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited for next year. I'm excited for this season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're already looking ahead. But this season's going this to be season's good, This season's happening. Too. It's going to be great. Um, much like the volleyball is happening. Yes, much like volleyball. So, like I said before, very quickly, which I understand if you didn't catch it, they are 25-0, and 0, Nebraska, mm-hmm. um, which is... Still number one, of course. It's just their best start since, like, 2006, mm-hmm. 2005. I cannot remember the exact year. Uh, but the team started 25-0, and 0, or 23-0. 20, 23-0, no, yes. Um, so the next, like, milestone they could beat would basically to win out on the regular season. Right. Um, so Speaking yeah. of regular season, hosting Michigan tonight. Hosting Michigan tonight and then Iowa. They should handle them. I would. <laughs> I, one would think. One would think. And then they kind of have um, the uh, Black Friday Wisconsin match mm-hmm. um, in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Wisconsin, um, in case you didn't know, um, in the volleyball world, they lost to Penn State. Um, so after Nebraska uh, pulled off the reverse sweep over Penn State. Mm-hmm. Um, so Penn State went, like, lost in Nebraska, dropped, like, four or five in the poll, mm-hmm. and then beat Wisconsin and, like, went right back where they were. I'm not kidding you. I think they're exactly where they were before. I don't know why they dropped. Um, bone to pick with someone, I'm sure. <laughs> um, anyway, so, like, they had take on Wisconsin next. Well, after this weekend. The, mm-hmm. And that is after the football game. And that football game is going to be a big yes. deal. And this match is going to be a big deal. Yes. And, like, both of them are in BTN. And BTN's yes. numbers are going to be insane. Oh, my goodness. I'm just thinking of the advertising money they're going to get. So, 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 so much. And then um, they close up the regular season against Minnesota, which I feel like they always do. Right. Right. But also, easy to watch these games. Yeah. On BTN, <laughs> you can go to any sports bar 
mm-hmm. in the state of Nebraska almost. Yes. I would I don't know what's going on in western Nebraska, I'll be honest. Sure. Um, but I would be willing to bet that because Nebraska football plays on BTN, they have BTN. Mm-hmm. Yes. So people want to see women's sports. Yep. And Creighton's also having a great season. Yeah. 15th, um, right? 15th, second straight week at that spot. Um, they, going for their 10th straight Big East regular season. Yeah, title. they are. Sorry for su- interrupting. No, they are such a powerhouse. That you deserve. You interrupt me to point <laughs> out how good this program is. That's fine. <laughs> they have Xavier, which is the team that they um, previously lost to for the first time ever this uh, season. Mm-hmm. Huge upset. Huge upset. That was um, a so road game for them. Right? A road match for them. Excuse yeah. Me. Um, and so now it's in Omaha. And I and now they have Norris because mm-hmm. I don't think they did against her Mm-mm. the first time. Um, so I'm <laughs> feeling revenge vibes. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm excited for that one. Oh, I think it's going to be great. They're also on, I believe, an 11 straight match win, win streak. They're on an 11 straight match win streak. They had 30 straight sets won, and mm-hmm. that set a program record. And then they uh, lost the next. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Is, you know, um, it happens. They lost it to St. John's. Um, who is one of the top teams in the mm-hmm. Big East? So, like, t- you know, if you're going to lose, you might as well lose to one of them. Um, exactly. And yeah. they're tied for first in the league. So, yeah. And then, anyway, so they. <laughs> right. <laughs> sorry. On a tangent. So, Xavier, um, you can watch that. Um, it is uh, tonight at 6 p.m., and mm-hmm. this could be on Nebraska Public Media. It should be, I would guess, pretty great. Um, and easy to see because people want to see women's sports. Agreed. And then they close the season against Butler on um, Sunday, and that's not easy to see because it's on Flow Sports. And I will eventually give a, a giant rant on Flow Sports. <laughs> but not today. Nope. And then they have the Big East Tournament, which they've already, um, they're already in the semifinals. They clinched by. Yes. And then we have... The confusion that is UNO. Yes. Okay, so UNO, they earned the second seed in the Summit League tournament, which gives them a first round bye, so automatic pass into the semifinals, which I believe is on Monday. They'll be playing either Denver or South Dakota State, which will put a pin in that one. Um, But this was a fun (laughs) situation because four teams, Omaha, Kansas City, Denver, South Dakota, all finished with a 12-4 and conference record. So that is a four-way share of the regular season title. So then they had to go to their first tiebreaker, which would be the best head-to-head record. Kansas City gets that. So they got the top seed. Mm -hmm. Okay, the rest of the seeds, basically they all lost to each other. So there was no real head-to-head winner. Yes, it was a mess. So they were determined by how they played or how they fared against Kansas City. Which seems so strange. I yeah, like I mean, I'm up. just guessing because they ended up being the top seed. So fine, whatever. Um, but then an additional tiebreaker was needed between UNO and Denver. Mm-hmm. And they went with what they call head to head set winning percentage. Basically, the Mavericks won five of eight sets against the Pioneers. So they got the second seed. It shouldn't be that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. You, you, you could... You could just count up how many points. Yes. I mean, I, I I joke around that Nebraska high school has just such a convoluted point system and all their other stuff. But even that, I feel like, makes a little bit more sense. I also feel like mess. if you just count up the points, it almost highlights like a better defense, uh, like a yes. better defensive team is going to do better in that. Yes. Um, I don't they know. They should if you hire know. us to do these things. Like, come on. <laughs> anyway. So. So, yeah. So, Summit League Tournament. <laughs> Uh, UNO, second seed, they will be playing Monday either against Denver or South Dakota State. And as we've mentioned before, they don't always fare well against Denver, so... No, but they're probably going to be taking on Denver. Yes. um, Because Denver is... uh, The better team. The better team. (laughs) Um, And I'm not just saying that because I'm a USD grad, like, they actually Mm -hmm. are. And proved by this four-way tiebreaker mess. mess. The mess. So, um, I always check that. UNO always seems to struggle against Denver. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what Omaha's thing is with that city, but that is or with that school. But it is literally like every sport. I feel right. like hockey does, mm-hmm. basketball definitely does. Mm-hmm. I don't. I. I don't. I don't understand it. Um, I mean, I'm not, it's not a dig on Denver at all. They no, are they're good. good. They're good. Um, it's just like it's always so confusing to me to like, <laughs> like, yeah. If Denver is like number three in the seating. It like UNO will be the one seed, but not be Denver. It doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but UNO um, likes to choke in the championships, <laughs> so I could see them beating Denver. And then 
as much as I would love for them to make a championship, mm-hmm. like just to win the championship, yes. I don't. I, I don't um, Outside I'm, shot. I'm hesitant to say that. Gotcha. Yeah. They seem to just kind of struggle in the moment. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. We'll see. Yes. We're hopeful. And then we have our other Omaha volleyball team, which would be the Supernovas. Dun, dun, dun. So the schedule has been released. They open the season at home against Atlanta on January 24th. And best part of this, it's going to be the first game of the entire league to be played, which is a huge honor. And I think really well-deserved for the Omaha fan base. No, and I, I such a smart business move because Nebraska will like show up show up (laughs) omaha will show up like Mm -hmm. they will yes they will they love we love volleyball here yes not just here specifically like this whole state the state um and the supernovas okay their first three games are actually going to be at home after atlanta they're going to take on san diego and las vegas and that'll be during the first week of february and the pro volleyball federation has announced their selection order for the collegiate player draft. Yes, they're going to have a collegiate player draft. Love it. Yes. It's December 11th, also in Atlanta, and it'll have 5 rounds. Eligible players have to be at least 18 on the day of the draft and they have to be a college player. It can be any division, can be junior college, but mm-hmm. have to be a college player. They don't have to declare for the draft and it's going to be kind of similar to like MLB draft where um, they can return to college if they decide to not sign with the team that drafts them, which I think is great. I think that's great. Uh, and the Supernovas have the 7th, 8th, 21st, 22nd, and 35th picks. Yeah, I looked. Where do you think Merritt Beeson gets picked? Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, 7th is the last pick in the first round. I bet she goes first round. I Oh, it would be insane for her not to. Sarah but it'd just too. be really nice if she were going to Omaha. It would be. I bet she goes like. She'll be one or two, I think. I would say two or three. Two I would or three. Bet, oh, I, that's true. Yeah. I, I'm thinking like Sarah Franklin. Yeah. Um, and that, that girl from Penn State that I, or woman, excuse me, woman from Penn State that I cannot think of her name right now. It's. Well, once we're out of college, everybody seems like a kid. So calling her a girl is not insulting in this case. Okay. <laughs> and much better if I'm doing it than, a, I suppose, a man. Um, yes. Anyway. And then, sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Okay. I just have one last supernova note, and it's a fun, well, even more fun note. So former Huskers, Kenzie Maloney and Kenzie Knuckles, and former Blue Jay Jayla Zimmerman have joined the Supernovas as ambassadors for the fan engagement team, which I think is genius marketing. It is so smart because those were such big fan favorites at both of those schools. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And those schools are here. Yes. And they've already started doing some appearances and social posts and everything. They've also been posting getting to know like all the team members who have been signed so definitely check that out maybe we'll start doing some more interviews with them we're hoping you know schedules gotta align but very exciting yeah also exciting is state volleyball happens yes um so six teams uh one um we unfortunately didn't get to report a podcast um, at during that time. A lot of that. Is Apologies, more f- we've got schedule issues and. It everything. was me. It was me. I apologize. Um, I have. I had problems. Um, it is what it is. Uh, so uh, Lincoln Southwest won the Class A. They're like the first Lincoln team to win Class A in a really long time. I cannot even remember. They beat Papillion La Vista, um, because Papillion La Vista beat Papio South in the opening round, and that mm-hmm. was like gigantic news. Um, which is like that all that to say is like that Lincoln Southwest did like phenomenal. That was a great uh, final match. It was a sweep. Um, and then Scott nine Pete's not shocked. Yeah. Not surprised. I'm shocked. Um, but it was such a good match between them and Norris. Um, yeah. No. And it, you, you gotta love watching good volleyball. You got to because it's so exciting. Yes. Cause there's something happening every and you're second. you're also seeing these in this case, girls, jumping out of the gym and i just think that's so fun when you see these girls Mm -hmm. get so high that like the top of the net is close to their waist like it's just fun i also want to remind everyone that um scott had one senior one one um and granted it was their defensive specialist which is a really good place to have a senior yes um but uh, basically everyone else is returning oh well that's fun for my mercy monarchs next year yeah i'm a homer (laughs) <laughs> I don't I don't really have a response to that. I don't know what to say. No. Um, so I'm just going to go. Um, but 10 Pete doesn't sound as good as 9 Pete. So no. 
So, uh, we'll but that being said, that would be like phenomenal to win 10 straight Mm -hmm. you're reached double digits i'm already anticipating what we're going to be prepping leading up to it just in case so we have things ready and it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun it's gonna be fun um renee um saunders their coach seemed Mm -hmm. like i don't want to say surprised but she was like i think she said it was like i think the quote in mike patterson's story is that she was like it's just surreal Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um so yeah she she's been fantastic for the skyhawks yes um um sem won in d1 and then overton took class d2 so that's the six teams that won congratulations, congratulations. To all of them. um so we are now moving into girls basketball season yes practice has started yeah, I, I believe this was the first week of nsaa allowed practice hours so yay so already hard at work um the games start november 30th Yes. And then super soon after that, we'll have our all Nebraska volleyball team release. That's coming December 3rd. Um, I can't tell you anything about that because it's all us. I know. I really want to be like, what's the theme? I'm not but telling you. I won't know until we all know. Um, so that will be December 3rd. They'll be on Omaha.com and then in the World Herald. Um, the paper version always looks beautiful. So It like, does. I love the like all class, all state, all of those selections. I think that the photo shoots that the World Herald has been doing, and I've only been here two years, but I definitely go through Mm -hmm. all of the archives to look because they're just super cool. Yeah. Um, And we do a really interesting web presentation for that as Mm -hmm. well. Like it looks great. There'll be the congrats graphics Mm -hmm. um, on Facebook and Twitter. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it'll be it's, it's a big deal for us. We take it very seriously, or I take it very seriously, oh. which means we all take it very seriously. Exactly <laughs> what Josie says goes. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. But, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, it'll be fun. I can't wait to see what it is. And it's always fun, too, to note what athletes either go on to have, like, super awesome careers or who to watch and in the of, future. Some of them really do. Mm-hmm. Like Becca Alec. I don't yeah. think you could uh, not say she hasn't had a stellar <laughs> career. And mm-hmm. she's just the first one coming to my mind. Yeah. Yeah. I I can't say more because I know. Right, because you'll like, start giving things away. I'll give things away. Note not... that I was sitting there quietly hoping she would let something Yeah, she was, she's pulling that reporter trick. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can check that in the paper on uh, December 3rd or on Omaha.com. And you can check us out wherever podcasts are available because we're everywhere. Yes. Yeah, so like, subscribe. So that you don't miss any of our episodes, leave us that five-star review. We would love it. Um, But for now, thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys.